All right. I want to go through some of the basics here on this, uh, this November day, and we'll go back to the beginning. And one of the things that we have been talking about uh, over the last little while is really the understanding that when we come to Revival Fellowship, when we belong to this church, it is a very, very simple message that all of us can understand. And that's the beauty of it is that Yes, there are people that desire to, let's get into the nitty gritty of, of the meaning of this word and make sure we understand the, uh, the grammar and how this relates to that. And if we go back to ancient Greek and Hebrew, we can, we can expound and we can get uh, a lot of exciting you know, enhancements to the gospel message. But for everybody out there, it really comes down to this. Are we going up? to meet the Lord in the air, living forever, uh, or are we not? Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. That's the other option. And uh, for a lot of the world, as we have seen, the the choice is there that they are going to be into, you know, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, as Jesus clearly warned us that, that you know, you, you hear sometimes about the seven deadly sins. Jesus said three and those are the, from the beginning of days, those are the things that have been, uh, you know, kind of the, the opposite of what is good, honest, true, and of a good report. And what we want to be doing is we want to be just kind of simplifying it. And when we talk to people, we'll, you know, John often says, you're in an elevator, you're going up to the third floor. While you're in that elevator, what are you going to say to that person? And, you know, two things, compassion, making a difference, that always should be the case. Or maybe we will give them a little bit of a, you know, to uh, to prick them a bit. And uh, so a seed that makes them think, oh, wow, I never really thought about that. Maybe I better start to rethink my life and get on with things. But ultimately, God came to save in the form of a man named Jesus, his son, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. We understand that for those of us that have been around. But anybody listening to this for the first time, God loves you very much. That has always been his plan. And we can look at the whole history of the creation of man, the plan, the perfect uh, garden, the fall, the sin, the rejection, the war against God, the who are you to judge us and other things that people have come against. But it just comes down to this. He said, you can fight against me. You can shake your stick against me, but I'm always going to be here with arms wide open, loving you as an everlasting father. Come unto me, all you that are heavily burdened, and I will give you rest. This is the love of God that shed abroad in our hearts for those of us that are spirit filled. That is in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, which is given unto us. Well, let's go back to the, the basics. Of course, everybody knows that there are fundamentals and there are incidentals. We'll go through John 3 and we will come up with maybe some fundamentals and some incidentals let's get there with john 3 verse 1 let's read through it one second well we get the scriptures up there but if you turn to john 3 in your bibles remember if you ever go to vancouver paper bibles no phones no tablets no motor cars not a single luxury no sorry paper bibles we often pull out our tablet or smartphone, or we just sit there and we're spoiled with Anthony's ability to put the scriptures up there on the screen. But uh, the old the old idea of let's get our paper Bibles out and make them active, I think that's, that's a good reminder for any of us. Uh, okay, so where are we? There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that our teacher, Come from God, for no man can do these miracles that does except God be with him. For anybody that's watched the series, uh, The Chosen, uh, the, uh, no, 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 just hold, this is hold, this is switch, this is hold, this is switch. Okay, 
There we this is Steele second. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, congratulations to anybody that's watching the baseball. Somebody won the World Series. I don't know, but I don't watch baseball. Anyway, the uh, the the back to the scriptures. Now, where was I? The yeah, for anybody that had watched the series, The Chosen, uh, it was the first time I'd ever seen a series where they actually expanded on the Nicodemus meeting Jesus. I thought, wow, that's that's really powerful uh, and exciting to see that because Nicodemus was just going, well, these miracles are happening and people are getting healed. People are are seeing lame are walking and uh, those that are oppressed by the devil are being set free. Wow. Fantastic. Miracle signs and wonders. And what does Jesus say? Well, thank you so much for recognizing that that uh, that I'm I'm such an all powerful and and great person. That's uh, that's very good of you. No, he just goes right between the eyes in John three three, and says uh, unto him, verily, verily, or truly, truly, the cierto, the cierto. Te digo, te dige, right? Digi. Uh, I say unto thee, except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of god now that's pretty powerful explicit stuff except it's a bit confusing so nicodemus says unto him how can a man be born when he is old can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born obviously that's a question anybody that has no clue might say and what does jesus say in verse five it says Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And that which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. And then we get this interesting thing for anybody that lives in Seattle and Victoria. You understand this. The wind bloweth where it listeth. It goes where it wants. And you hear the sound of it, the rustling of the leaves. Uh, you know, as Jordan's driving me down, uh, he was driving my car and I'm in the passenger seat and we're getting blown off because the wind was just coming at, at hurricane force as we go over the mountain pass on Friday night. And uh, you could definitely hear the sound of that wind blowing. Everyone hears it, but you can't tell where it's coming unless you have some meteorological tools like Jordan does, and whither it goes, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Now, that fundamentally is a fundamental. Very clear, Jesus is very articulate. If you want to get to heaven, you need to be born again. And now, this is the problem that we have when we run into people that, that you know, might go to, to other churches as they... The, we'll just skip over that skip over that one but to me I, I think that's essential if somebody is wanting to know hey i, I want to get to nanaimo what do i do well we get the gps app and that gives us a map of how to get to nanaimo if somebody wants to know how to be a better hockey player we're going to get john in here he'll give a clinic and he'll probably put them on a program and a plan of how to be a better hockey player uh, you know, maybe the Canucks could use your help, John. But if we want to be, uh, you know, a better plumber and we want to know how to put the piping in there, then, well, you know, you guys know this. I phone up Bobby and say, Bobby, what do I need to do here? Oh, well, you take the thing of Bobby and you add this here and you do the the, uh, the this thing and that thing. And then you put it all together and it works. And just remember one thing, Mark, one thing, water flows downhill. Oh, thanks. I have no idea what else you said, but I got that. And that's essentially the uh, the answer when we're looking at here is water flows downhill. Water flows downhill. And that means if you want to go up, you better get in the baptism tank and be baptized in water by full immersion. You better receive the Holy Spirit. That's if you seriously want to know how to get to heaven. And so anybody that reads that should now go, okay, well, that's very important. I better understand that. Now, of course, 
we know that there are incidentals in there. And again, uh, the as we read down the, you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish. And we hear that and everybody, oh, there you go. All you have to do is believe. It doesn't define what the word believe means, which when we look at it and we understand it, it means trust in, rely on, adhere to, and stick to everything that Jesus says. So we just say, I believe there's a city called Seattle. All right. How are we going to get there? Well, I believe it. So therefore, that's it. I'm going to get there. Well, maybe we should take a look at the map and that might give us a better idea. If there's a place called heaven and there's a savior named Jesus and we believe that there is, then maybe we're going to look at the map. And that's what it's saying right there. So in verse 17, the important thing about any of this, you've got John 3, 17 up, right? You do have that. Okay. This is fundamentally an important concept. Great to believe we're looking at the map. And the compassion and the love and the understanding is that God did not send his son in the world to condemn the world, but that the, the world through him might be saved. Just pause on that and look at that again and read that and understand that. And all the critics of Christianity and all the people that like to dehumanize us and call us all kinds of names and falsely accuse us. It really comes down to that. We are the ones with love. We are the ones with compassion. We are the ones that are here with open arms, not judging, not condemning, but showing the roadmap to heaven. And yeah, people have stuff to deal with. We know that. And you come along, Jesus said, no one's condemned you. No, neither do I condemn you, but go sin no more. Maybe that's it. There's compassion in the door. Then we say, look, the time is now and the place is now, no matter where you've been, to get back on the path to righteousness if you've been off it, or if you've never been on it, the time is to follow the map and the plan to get to heaven. No one is here to condemn anybody. That will come someday. But as often is said and spoken around, that's above my pay grade. Verse 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. And there's the problem. Is that, and again, that's not us judging them. That's If anybody has a problem with that, well, you know, look, that's what the word of God says. And so it's up to us to understand that. And it's up to us to not come across as being self-righteous in any of our things. Yeah, absolutely. Walk that confident walk. We shine our light. And then what does the rest of it says? Because he has not believed in him, the the name of the only begotten son. All right. So the, the plan and the path here seems very clear that when we, when we look at that, that we, we can see very clearly that God came to save, he came to forgive, his, his son came with a plan and a purpose that he was going to die, that he was going to do the will of the Father, that on the third day he knew what was going to happen, he was going to rise and meet the Lord in the air, and that on the third day, of course, be shown, and everybody would, uh, you know, would be given hope. What happened? Are you sharing the screen or not sharing the screen? All right. Let me know what's happening. Are you okay? Do I need to? All right. We'll go on to the next verse then. John 5. John 5. Okay, 
Are we good? All right, perfect. Thank you. Excellent. There we go. Technology is wonderful and, and we're getting there. All right. So I am come in my father's name and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. How can you believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Do not think I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom you trust. For had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? So that's kind of an interesting one. After all this loving and compassion, Jesus is starting to receive a little bit of uh, resistance there, as it were. Some people are saying, hey, 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 you're doing all this stuff. Why? Because Beelzebub is uh, is giving you some special power. And he says, I'm not, I'm not coming in my name, the name of the Father. Very humble. Uh, eventually, we know that that's going to that's going to all come out but he says if you're not receiving me then you know you're you're condemned already and he says because look don't blame me if you had read the law and the prophets you hold up moses and now he's getting right in their face these are the pharisees and the people that are rejecting him look at the book look at the ancient history that has been written since the beginning of time that yes there will be a sacrifice and yes believing on that sacrifice trusting in it and believing in the words that he says is going to supersede anything now if you haven't read moses and you don't trust in the law or in that day they kept prof you know professing that yeah, no, 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 we follow Moses. You're trying to replace Moses. No, I didn't come to replace Moses. I came to complete Moses, right? Understand that? So when we're looking at that, it's like, here's the book, here's the plan, and I'm the final recipe ingredient to bake the cake. So if you want it to look like it is on the outside of the box, this is a necessary ingredient. But yet they, they wouldn't believe that. And we often have that argument. Oh, you're saying this, you're saying that. No, I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying the word of God says that. Always and everywhere, it's love, saving, compassion, come unto me, prosperity, and blessing. That's what it is. Now, if you resist against that, we've got some other stuff over here that's, but I think everybody that's listening to this day, you are on the plan of walking forward, you know, that way. And that's what we should always be. But what about judgment? What about judgment? We'll just talk about that for a second because it is in there. You know, we can't sort of here. We'll just skip over that page in the Bible and judgment in John 8. Judgment in John 8 is an interesting one. And in John 12, John 8, verse 15. Let's turn to that. John 8, verse 15. You judge after the flesh. I judge no man. And yet, if I judge, my judgment is true. For I am not alone, but I am the Father that sent me. That's key. And if we go down uh, in uh, John 12, while we're here, let's go down to John 12, flip open to that in verse 47. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. And in 48, he that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words, hath one that judgeth him, the word that I have spoken. The same shall judge him on the last day. 
so there's what we're up against there is the the whole fact that Jesus is saying, look, over here is saving, over here is grace, over here is is the pathway to life. Very simple message. Very simple message. But there's there's always the warning is look, I, I'm not here to judge you. And when we're out there witnessing to people, I'm not here to judge you. But if you go against the word of God, that judgment is there. That's not my place. That's above my pay grade. So you see that that's the way that we, when we go, that's the way we talk is that you don't like it. Take it up with the person that wrote the book, you know, just get on your knees and pray to them and they will certainly present to you. But the, what's not to like the blessing, the honor, the fellowship, the, the Holy Spirit revival, healing signs and wonders. And guess what? Yes, there are some people that are going through trials and tribulation. That will happen. But isn't it nicer and comforting to know that when you go through stuff, when you go through challenges, you have prayer as your weapon or as your comforter that God sent for you when you receive the Holy Spirit? And that immediately there's prayer lists and people around that are there to support you and uplift you and encourage you no matter what is coming against you. Now, what about what about the people that reject us? What about we go in and something happens and they uh, suddenly nobody's receiving us? Well, Believe me, I think it's a human nature to to go through this uh, situation where let's just, you know, we did our uh, our um, prophet bowl with Anthony playing Elijah and, you know, calling the fire down from heaven. Just why don't you call fire down from heaven and just burn them up or pray that the the earth opens up and swallows all the, the evil people whole? Uh, you know, certainly... I, I can understand that, that we're walking along and people are coming against us and rejecting us. And and maybe that's a that's a very human emotion. Well, we have to channel that and make sure that that uh, we remove that from us because that's not the God that we serve. Uh, however, a couple of the disciples did do that when they said to Jesus, bring the fire down from heaven. And in Luke, uh, what was it, Anthony? It was Luke 9. Yeah, Luke 9 and 54. And when uh, some people refused to greet Jesus because he was on his way to Jerusalem, the disciples in Luke 9, 54, and when the disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elijah did? Now, it says Elias, but Elijah, as we know. And... Now, Jesus kind of is like, oh, do you see what I got to deal with here? And in verse 56, verse 56, thank you, Anthony. In uh, verse 56, if we skip down to it and you're reading it, for the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. That's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it is that as outraged as we can become. And it's easy. You, know, you watch enough news and you'll just be screaming at the TV sometimes, you know, and uh, or that person that's coming against you to, you know, and you're just going, God, why don't you just lightning bolt fire? Jesus says, just calm, calm, not now. Let's shine that light, keep that door open so that somebody that might have a chance to be saved is going to turn from opposing us to being on our team. Just like Saul became Paul. There's always a Saul out there that can become Paul 
or that somebody's heart can change and come unto the Lord and can be our greatest brother or sister sitting right beside us, preaching the gospel and being there. That's the compassion. That's the loving God that we have. Jesus had every right there to call fire down from heaven. This is the son of God. And they were rejecting him as they persecuted him. And he was on the cross dying. My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? He said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. That's the God we serve. The humility of it. If we've been around, we know the story. He could have called 10,000 angels. And it would have been over in a second. Wipe them out. But how would that look? How would history record that? You know, and again, people have often said in the Old Testament, it's a God of vengeance that calls fire down and consumes people. And there's a lot of love. There's a lot of compassion in there. Yes, there are points when God's word was tried and tested and it was proven, but it was very rare and very short lived. And people want to focus on the punishment that's up to them. I want to focus on the blessing and the grace and the fact that he had a plan. Here's the pathway to the promised land. Here's your provision in the desert. Here is your, your resistance against the enemies, your healing in the time of need, and your victory over your enemies. The walls came tumbling down, and their enemies were given unto them, and they entered into a land flowing of milk and honey. So the plan is there, and it's time for us to follow. Time for us to get serious about these things. Time for us to help out where we can help out, to give what we're able to give. When the house is full, when the dishes need cleaning, when the uh, you know the the tidying up after the party needs to be done. And that's proverbial, not just necessarily anytime we have a fellowship meal, but what are we going to do to see revival happen? When the person is put in our path, are we going to share with them the gospel or are we going to shy away? We're going to make excuses, say, oh, we can't do that because uh, this or that. You know, all right, well, you know, again, these are the stories there. And if we go to uh, uh, 57, Luke 9, 57. We're going to go down a little bit further here. And in uh, and it came to pass that they went on the way. A certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. Oh, really? Will you? How cool. And Jesus said unto him, foxes have holes and birds have the air of the air have nests. But the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. Uh, you know, the, somebody said he, he was a homeless man. And he said unto another, follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first. I, I, I got to go bury my father. It's very sick. He's in the care home. I'll take care of that. And then I will follow you. Well, here's the challenge. Jesus said unto him, let the dead bury their dead. And if you look at the Greek on that, there's uh, a little bit more to it than, than meets the eye. But let's just take that and understand the, the exhortation that our Lord and Savior is saying. But go thou and preach the kingdom of God. The first things first. First things first is, is the priority is God first. And, uh, you know, other things will get taken care of. That's some people might say that's, well, that's uncompatible. If you understand the whole concept of that or, or the challenge there and the manifesto that Jesus is talking about, uh, then uh, it's not as harsh as it sounds. But it is a reminder to each and every one of us that God has to come first. And another, he said, Lord, I will follow thee, but first let me go bid farewell, which are at my home and at my house i you know i just i i gotta go say goodbye and uh, what does jesus said jesus said unto him no man having put his hand to the plow 
and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Now, those are definitely some challenging scriptures, but each and every one of us is to pray about that and look at that in our own lives and our own walk is where do our priorities lie? And again, you know the way that we run things in our fellowship and here. The scriptures are there. You go home, you pray about it, you talk to God, you work out what you are able to uh, to, to do. But the challenge certainly is a very strong one. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these things will be added unto you. If we are concerned about other things, worldly things or family issues or uh, the best way to deal with that is shine our light in a loving, compassionate way, preaching the gospel and preaching the kingdom. In doing that, we will be better able to serve and set an example for our families that are unsaved that they might be able to come to the Lord. And of course, as it is said, there is no turning back. Once your hand is on the plow, and of course, that's the agriculture thing, that if you're going to make sure that line is straight, you got to keep your eye on the end of the field, that line marker. If you take your eye off that, then you're going to have you know, a very wayward field, and that's not going to be really good when it comes harvest time. So we got to make sure that we are focused. And that's the challenge in there for each and every one of us in the Lord, is that for us that are born again, spirit-filled, baptized, and preaching the gospel, we have been called to a higher calling. And yes, each and every one of us have had to make some decisions, make some sacrifices, and and uh, make some choices along the way. And God has blessed those when we uh, when we uh, when we seek Him. And uh, yeah, we certainly, speaking from experience, each and every one of us knows that that family, job, other situations uh, in the world uh, can come along. And we can fool ourselves sometimes by thinking, okay, well, if we go do this, maybe it's going to draw them in here. At the end of the day, our priority has to be on God. That if we do delude ourselves a little bit and think that, well, if we maybe, if, no, at some point, the Bible is very clear that the best recipe to get to the destination is following him and making sure that that's our priority. And all I can do as a pastor, all anybody, Pastor Ben or other people that are, are leaders and in the fellowship, uh, uh, you know, that we, all we can do is try and live by example, try and set an example, try and do the best and, and be humble enough to know that, that there are times and, oh, you know, maybe we could have done better. Maybe we could have been a better example. Maybe we could have been there for, for each and every one of you you know we're, we're we're human as well and we only do as well as uh as we can and and sometimes uh we're grateful for the support that we have from the fellowship for the people that have been there uh, along with us building us up encouraging us and reminding us from times that you know that we haven't been perfect or or, or not the best in leadership the best examples uh, uh we thank you for your patience with us as we all are on that same journey together. That, that I think, is a, is a key thing. Now, we'll finish off in Isaiah 45, 21, because as I said, this love, compassion, saving, it's not a new concept, not a Jesus concept, but something that has been there from the beginning. As the people of Israel were turning against God, as the people of Israel were worshiping false gods, false idols, etc., Isaiah 45, 21. Tell ye and bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together. Who hath declared this from the ancient of time? Who hath told it from that time? Have I not the Lord? And there is no God else beside me, a just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. Look unto me and be ye saved. All the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is none else. I have sworn by myself, the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return, that unto me every knee shall bow and every tongue shall swear or confess. So that is 
the promise there. A loving, saving God that cries unto his people, but also reminds them that there will be a time when every knee will bow and every tongue will confess as we say, let's get on our knees now. Well, the choice is ours. Let's get on our knees. Let's come to the Lord. Let's be baptized. Let's be spirit-filled. Whoever is listening to this for the first time, repent. Turn away from your, your old life. It shouldn't be a harsh statement. We all know that we've sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Every one of us, the best we can do, you know, compared to the righteousness of God, and that's not to put God up on a, on a high altar, but it is something that we need in our lives. The answer can be through the humility, the, re the redemptive baptism for the forgiveness of sins in water. As Jesus set the example by John the Baptist, you must be baptized. And then you will promise, guarantee, receive the Holy Spirit, a gift with signs following, speaking in other tongues. As it says in Mark 16, believers will speak in other tongues. As it says in Mark 16, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that does not believe will be condemned. You can fight against the Lord or you can come unto him. He's there with open arms today to welcome you into the kingdom. I'll welcome you back. Welcome you back and say, all right, this is it. This is the time to get on track, to walk in lockstep, one with another, to build up the fellowship, to edify, to, to come to the, to the party and say, I'm going to be one of the ones that make sure that I'm leaving the stall cleaner than it was when I came. Hopefully that's you. Hopefully that's me. I thank you all. God bless and all the people said. Amen.